All right, guys. Um, as advertised, we have Houston Texan Jeff Driscoll joining us on the show today. First of all, Jeff, uh, listen, congrats on the huge win yesterday. Houston Texans defeating number one team, the AFC uh, Tennessee Titans on the road. Tough environment, divisional game. Congrats on the win. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, we uh, we're excited about the win, and uh, hopefully, we can get something going and go on a run here for uh, during the back half of the season. Absolutely, got the Jets here next week um, at home. Good luck this Sunday. Um, so, obviously, for me, kids around my age um, in the Oviedo community, going to Haggerty, I also actually went to Oviedo. Uh, we all looked up to to you guys, and um, you know, came all the games uh, Friday nights. Looking forward to Friday nights throughout the throughout the week. Looking back on it now, was it what was it like being, you know, a hyped up number one dual threat quarterback coming out of the class of 2011? And was it a culture shock? What was it like being the face of a community at 16, 17, 18 years old? Yeah, it was it was different. Um, everything happened kind of really quickly. You know, you go from never play, I didn't play football until seventh grade. You know, I played like fullback and D line. I played quarterback and pop Warner, number 44. Didn't really yeah. know. Didn't know what was going on, and then <laughs> kind of burst on the scene, um, you know, as a freshman in both football and baseball. Um, and, and then everything kind of just took off from there, uh, you know, with the recruiting, with, um, you know, just being kind of nationally recognized um, as a recruit. You know, there's a – it's kind of – it's kind of just – it was weird as a 15-, 16-year-old. Um, but, I, I mean, I think I was able to stay humble, you know, because my parents, Absolutely. the way they raised me up, the guidance that I had and the coaches that I had, uh, you know, really helped me through that whole process and helped me stay humble and grounded. So very appreciative of all the support that I had from, you know, everybody involved. Yeah, that's awesome. Speaking of your parents, I, I actually, my, like I said, my name's Damon. That's Chris. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I was actually your neighbor. I was your neighbor for around four years and at Live Oak on Gamble Oak Court. Uh, I was your next door neighbor. Uh, so I used to chill, uh, chill with Jason because I think you were gone like right when I got there. I moved there in seventh grade. But I remember you got I used to come over for a couple of the barbecues that your dad, you know, had. I'll go over with my stepdad. We would just watch some of the games. But that, I always thought that was cool. That I was always got to be your neighbor. But um, speaking of back in high school, the All-American game, I remember just from um, my experience when I was watching that game when you were playing, you had that like 60-yard run scramble. And then after you do like the Gator Tom. Yeah. And you're like oh, yeah. there out there pump just like me. I was 11 years old watching that. It was just awesome to see, you know, someone from our town to be over there on that big that type of stage. What kind of what was the experience playing in a game like that? You know, you're playing with all the top recruits in the nation. Yeah, um, it was it was an unbelievable experience. Um, I'll never forget. I got picked up in a limo and rode uh, over to Disney, kind of where we stayed and practiced with Ha, -ha mm -hmm. Clinton Dick. And wow. it was just two dudes you know, that were from the same general area. We mm -hmm. followed each other growing up. You know, both of us are still in the league to, to uh, you know, this day. So it was it was really cool just to, uh, you know, go through it with with a bunch of guys and watch everyone's past and careers um, and just see, seeing how everybody's panned out and, uh, you know, really made a career out of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, that was an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, something that I, I definitely didn't take for granted. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead. All right, then uh, speaking with Haggerty, because I went to Haggerty as well. I transferred to Lake Howell, um, but I, I started off at Haggerty my first two years. Uh, when you played at Haggerty, wh who would you say was, you know, an athletic kid that was on your team that kind of maybe got overlooked, that didn't get the, you know, recognition as they deserve, you know, one of your teammates? Yeah, I mean, there was – we definitely had uh, some good players when I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a guy, he was my age. His name was Tyler Thrift. He was he was a receiver. Oh, yeah, I remember him. Yep. He's kind of the deep ball guy. Yeah. You know, uh, he caught a bunch of deep balls, and um, I don't think he ever ended up playing college football. But you know, he was about six foot two, six foot three, was fast and could and could catch the ball. So I don't know why he kind of got looked over. But that's just the first one that that comes to mind. There was a bunch of yeah. other ones. Um, Definitely. There was a there was a guy named Haywood. Well, I forgot his first name. Yeah, Zach, Zach Haywood. He played basically everything for us, running back, receiver. I think he played linebacker and safety as well. Um, you know, he's another one that I could have seen playing uh, college college football. Hunter Boudreau. Um, Obviously. You know, the names are yeah, – I remember, I remember, yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, there's, there's just tons of talent from the area. 
And oh, uh, so I'm, I'm fortunate enough to where, um, you know, I was able to to be recruited, highly recruited, and, uh, mm-hmm. just, you know, lucky enough to still play. Right. So, Jeff, man, uh, uh, born in, uh, well, not raised, but born in Boston, huge Red Sox fan. I have to ask you. Back in 2013, Red Sox selected you. Um, you know, did you ever give that much consideration? Maybe potentially is it in your future? I don't know. I have to ask. Big Sox guy. No, I see. The, I see you got the hat going there. Um, <laughs> you know, it was it was wild. Um, just because I was I was so heavily recruited in baseball and you know, or in football. I'm sorry. And uh, you know, I thought I was going to be the first overall draft pick after three years. And uh, so I kind of just stopped playing baseball. I told all the scouts, hey. Don't draft me. I'm not going to come play baseball. I'm going to be a football player. <laughs> so I don't want you to even waste your draft pick. And so I didn't get I didn't get drafted at a high school, um, which, you know, I, I probably could have been drafted pretty high. And then after three or four years, uh, I think it was three years at Florida, I got drafted. And I was just kind of following it on my phone. Because you get down to the 24th, 25th, 26th yeah. round, those names are flying off the board. You know, there's mm. – Every about 10 seconds, there's another pick. And I saw my name go across my phone. And I was like, what in the world? You know, just kind of <laughs> watching to see if my other buddies were, were going to get drafted. If my name goes across. It was a wild deal. I didn't get a call for a couple of days. And, you know, I just kind of asked them, like, guys, why why would you draft me? I told you. Yeah. I didn't want to and they're like, well, I mean, there's 40 rounds. So we got to draft somebody. And we feel like, uh, you know, if you do ever do, if you ever do choose to play, you have a chance to make the big leagues. And, uh we just want your rights, so sign my rights to the Red Sox. And if I ever do go back and play, which is a very, very slim chance, right? <laughs> uh, it has to be for the Red Sox. Nah, that's, that's pretty, pretty good because I, I just remember, you know, when you were drafted. drafted I, know I know it was late, but all my friends, friends day later, week of, of all my family, family from up north are like, like, that, that kid, kid went to Hattie, didn't he? Didn't he? You know, uh, everybody was hype. hype. Everybody was so. Listen, listen the invitation is there always. Oh yeah. Um. I'm not gonna harp on it too much, but you're when you got when you committed to Florida, what was like the expectation heading in, you know, to going you didn't go too far. I know Vito from Gainesville is like a two hour drive, but what were your expectations going to, you know, such a prestigious college and a great, you know, obviously program there at UF? Um, did you take a look around and, and just enjoy the moment as you know, like I said, small town from Oviedo? And, you know, how was the work and you know, just the, all the hard work that had to take you to get there? to you know end up playing up at uf yeah um so i graduated early from from haggerty i left a semester early mm-hmm. so i could enroll at uh at uf and start spring practice because going back to what i said you know i was super highly recruited i thought i was the man i thought i was going to go in and start win the heisman yeah. my freshman year and that's just you know that's just not that's how, how the story was going to go yeah but Hey, just to tell the kids, by the way, he he left Haggerty early because his grades are right. Let's just throw that out there. The grades were yeah. good. The grades were good. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time, uh, extra time at home, uh, making sure that I could graduate early and handling my business in the classroom. Um, but yeah, I, I I tried to go in and you know try to earn a starting job, and you know it didn't work out that way. College football is is tough, especially yeah. SEC, and um, you know I had a I had a lot to learn in a short amount of time, and um, I guess I, I I don't know if I met my expectations, but uh, I, re, I definitely enjoyed my time there. Uh, graduated from University of Florida. We won a bunch of games when I was there, mm-hmm. and um, you know I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah, Fire. how was uh, uh, how was coaching with Will Muschamp? I just had a question about that one real quick because he came in right when Urban Meyer left. How was uh, how was Muschamp as a coach? I know he was a very defensive minded guy, but you know coming into UF, UF always had an amazing defense. So how was him as a coach, you know, just as a mentor to you? Yeah, so his, his four years were my four years. We kind of were mm-hmm. there at the same time. And um, um, I loved him. Great dude, great coach. It was his first ever head coaching job was at the University of Florida, which is, I mean, that's tough. That's that's amazing, it's, yeah. It's a tough spot to coach. Um, the fan the fans are awesome, but their their expectations are high, and we didn't mm-hmm. – we didn't win any national championships, so that means it was a failure. Um, yeah, you know, in, in a lot of people's eyes. But you know, I loved Coach Muschamp. I thought he was a great coach, a great person, and uh, I love being around him. So I, I, I've always wished him nothing but the best in his career moving forward as he's uh, as he's moved around to a couple mm-hmm. of uh, SEC schools. So um, you know, I still think he has a a great coaching career ahead of him. Yeah. So um, 
you then went on to transfer to LA Tech where, you know, senior season through for over 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns. How would you describe the transition from Florida to there? And what was the reception like from the coaches and the teammates? Yeah, so, um, you know, when you, when you transfer in and you have one year of eligibility left, a bunch of things really have to line up. Um, you know, from their from the team's perspective, from the player's perspective, uh, to really make that move. So I wanted to go somewhere where, you know, I'll kind of come in and just be the known starter. I wanted to go somewhere where I thought they would utilize my athletic abilities, um, you know, and just get the most out of my potential. And then I wanted to go somewhere with good skill players. So um, there's <laughs> that, that's a that's a lot of things right there that you have to, yep. you know, to find. Um, and it's, it's hard to find a program that has that, that doesn't already have an established quarterback or somebody that they really feel like can take over. So, um, you know, there was a bunch of big name schools that, um, I was getting recruited by that I, you know, kind of felt maybe this is better for my future, but you know, something just felt right about Louisiana tech. And, uh, we had a bunch of good players, had a really good season and, uh, coach Holtz up there, uh, has been doing a great job, uh, you know, even before I got there and ever since. So. Great decision. I was there for like six or seven months, and I've uh, I've created a bunch of friends, you know, out of the short time I was there. Absolutely. And uh, so in 2015, the 49ers, you know, they sent Vernon Davis over to Peyton Manning and the Broncos in return, got a six-round draft pick in 2016. They ended up using that pick to select you. You know, what was that day like? <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that. I had no idea. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that? I yeah. No so, That's how it happened. Yep. 20 <laughs> 49ers sent a draft pick, uh, well, got the draft pick for Vernon Davis. He went on to play with Peyton Manning, and they used that draft pick to select you. I was just going to ask, you know, what was that day like? Uh, you could kind of take that through, take us through draft day and uh, when you got that call. Yeah, so the, it's, the whole draft process is wild. Um, you know, you, you, leave, you leave your school or whatever. Um, you hang out with your family for maybe a week or two, and then you start training uh, for the combine, for the senior bowl, uh, for your pro day. Um, and you, you know, you're getting ready physically, but you're getting mental, getting ready mentally as well, flying all over the country on team visits and you get, you know, information from your agent, from the internet, you know, you're projected to be drafted between this round and this round. Oh, this team loves you. This coach will call you up and say, Hey, we're going to take you with this pick. So you, you get kind of an expectation in your head and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just say the draft day was longer than anticipated. Um, mm. You know, I thought I was going to go earlier than I did. Um, mm. But, I mean, after it's all said and done, you hear your name called, you get that phone call from, you know, at the time, Chip, Chip Kelly. And, uh, you know, it was awesome. It was just kind of like a dream that was finally realized. And you just get to share that awesome moment with all the, uh, all the people that have helped you get there. And let's remember, it wasn't like, you know, you struggle talent wise or there's people around you, you took some, you know, injuries there at Florida and stuff like that. So, you know, I think you handled the situation that you were in the best of your ability and uh, you are where you are now, which is amazing. So. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Then speaking of the draft day and just the NFL in general, how was it adapting to the life of the NFL? You know, I, I hear from a lot of different people, like just from Obito of how it changed in like a, in a second, you know, you hear, they hear their name get drafted and then, it's like a whole different life. Were there any like mentors or coaches that helped you adjust to like the little things of just being an NFL player? Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much you have to learn. Um, you know, rookies and your rookie year in the NFL is a tough year just mm -hmm. because I go from your, your senior season of football to training and the whole draft prep trip, the draft prep, which is, you know, an experience in and of itself. And then you go into a season where you're used to 11 games. Now you have 16 games with four preseason games and you're doing it with grown men and you're trying not to get cut the whole times. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot to learn in the league. Um, I'd say the biggest mentor that I've had um, is Andy Dalton um, in Cincinnati together for three years and just everything he did, he did it the right way. And uh, I just always appreciated that about him. Yeah. My next question, that's crazy. I was literally mentioning Andy Dalton uh, in 2018, October 21st. That was when he got hurt against the Chiefs and you stepped in. It was your first game in the NFL. What was like that moment just seeing the crowd and then hearing your name go in and obviously seeing your good friend Andy Dalton go down, but you having to, you know, get there, step up and be the man. 
for that yeah, game. Uh, yeah, being being a, you know in a backup quarterback role, um, it's it's different because the only way you're really going to get in is if something bad happens. Yeah, you know, so you never want you never want that you never want yeah. anything bad to happen. But at the same time, you want to be playing. You want to be out there. Uh, you want to show your skills. So. Uh, you just de- definitely always have to be ready um, just because there's, I mean, there's some backup quarterbacks in this league that go years without taking a snap. So mm-hmm. when you do get the opportunity, it's important that you capitalize. And, uh, you know, I've kind of prided myself throughout my career that I've really, uh, you know, done the work in the, in the classroom, in the meeting room to, to make sure that if I was called upon, I'd be ready to go. Yeah. So, you know, as we start, you know, moving throughout your career, um, I do have to say one thing. Back in 2019, your time with Detroit, uh, you guys played Washington. You started at quarterback. Did you hurt your hamstring in that game? Or was it that week of practice, following week of practice? I, I, you came up on the injury report there. I only remember that because we have big Thanksgiving Day parties, and I was, like, so hype uh, for you to play on Thanksgiving Day, bro. Like, I, I seriously remember that day just sitting with my family. And I was like, he's got to be in line. I, I didn't know you had hurt your hamstring. What, what, what it, was that during the week or in that game? No, it was during the game. Yeah, I yanked, I yanked the hammy. Uh, it was in like the third quarter uh, against the Redskins. So it was a tough deal. Um, but that's, that's part of the game. Injuries are part of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what was, the, uh, what was last year like being with the Broncos? I know the Oviedo community was super excited to see you and uh, Blake together. Right, that that's pretty cool in the same quarterback room in Denver. It's crazy how the world comes full circle. What what was that reunion like? It was it was just a different year or a different year in general. Um, you know, with all the COVID protocols that we yep. had to go through, um, it definitely wasn't the same. You know, obviously we were excited that we were still able to have our season and you know play a, play a complete year. Uh, but you just didn't get the uh, you didn't get the same locker room effect, the same feel that you had from years past. But uh, being with Blake was awesome. Blake's an awesome dude. We go way back to when we were young, uh, you know, playing baseball, basketball, football with and against each other. Uh, it, was, it was fun to, to cut it up and reminisce a little bit. And, uh, you know, it was it was awesome to be in this. You know, there's probably very few other uh, quarterback rooms in the league with two dudes from the same town. Oh, absolutely. And you guys, I mean, in the same town, Haggerty Oviedo, it's a pretty big rivalry back home. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm a Saints fan. So as a Saints fan, I know you for the first half of the season, you were with Mark Ingram. And I know he's like a locker room, uh, not like diva, but he makes everyone in that locker room, you know, pumped up. How was it for him being your teammate? And like as a person, do you still keep contact with him? Yeah, Mark was awesome. Uh, he was awesome to be around. He's, uh, you know, he's played a long time in this league for a reason. He's a great mm-hmm. player, but he's a great teammate as well. And uh, he's just, he's fun to be around. His energy is, in, is infectious. And, uh, you know, wish him nothing but the best. I think he just passed the uh, the Saints all-time yeah, rush. Yeah, yep. That's, the last game he did. That's unreal. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll always root for him. And, uh, yeah, he, he was awesome to be around. Funny dude. All right. Um, so, new chapter here in Houston. Obviously, uh, got two questions here. What's it like working under Tim Kelly, uh, OC over there in Houston? And then also, what's it like working with, uh, or if you've had any interactions with GM Nick Casario? I mean, he was an as a New England fan, obviously from Boston and stuff. He he obviously Belichick's the GM over there, um, but in New England, he was the director of player personnel for over twelve years. What what are what are your relationship with uh, like with those two guys? Yeah, I mean, the, just the organization in general is awesome. Um, you know, and you can feel that from day one. Everything that um, everyone does from the from the top down there is first class. And uh, I just admire the way that they've put the roster together with first-class people. Um, you know, nothing but good dudes on, on the roster. Uh, people that love to come to work every day. And that's that's really what makes it fun. Um, but singling out those two guys, um, you know, they're awesome to be around. Super smart football minds. Uh, they care about the players and, and uh, super competitive. So that's all, that's all you can ask for in your leaders. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I mean, I'll touch on one last question. We had skipped it, but uh, I, going back to that COVID year real quick, what was it like navigating through all those protocols? And I had seen you actually popped up on the COVID list last year uh, for, for some time being. So obviously it was difficult. Um, perseverance is key here in this league. So what, what you know, some driving forces behind the motivation and uh, 
you know, obviously what was it like navigating throughout the protocols? Yeah, the COVID year was, it was different. Um, I mentioned earlier that, you know, one of the cool parts about the NFL is the locker room and all the personalities and, uh, you know, just the little, the little discussions, the little things that you get by being around these guys all the time. And you just didn't get that last year because the only communication we really could have was through Zoom. And, you know, as we all know, it's, it's, it's a, relatively effective way to communicate, but it's not, it's not person to person. And so we really missed that. And, um, you know, like I said, we were happy we got to play the season, but, uh, it just wasn't the same. So, but I mean, it was, it was, you go out there and you got to do your job. That's, that's what, uh, is preached throughout the league is, is do your job and do it at a high level. And, you know, no matter what the circumstances are, the, the fans don't care. Nobody really cares. Just go out and execute and we're professionals. So, uh, we figured out a way to get it done and keep the uh, keep the NFL momentum moving forward. Absolutely. So uh, I was going to go into the Q and A's. Yeah, I just had a question about. I see you're wearing the Gator shirt. What's going on this year? What What do you think they got going on? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm in tally right now. I go to I go to uh, up uh, up here. So up in, in Gainesville for two years. So I lived out there, right on University, right where the Chick Fil A is at. I live nice. there uh, on literally 109th, 10th Street, like right by the campus. So I'm up there a lot. Um, but yeah, all my friends are up there and you have them just like in shambles. They're like, what's going on? The, the, the whole overall environment doesn't feel the same anymore. I would just wonder what your thoughts about that. Big, Big week. week. Big week, huh? <laughs> Big, we need one. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a tough year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the one of the cool parts about going to Florida is you know, in theory, you should have a chance to compete for a national championship every year. Yeah. And uh, they just didn't, they didn't do that this year. And there was, you know, a couple of years when I was there where, you know, we didn't do that either. And, and when you don't do that, it's, uh, it's big boy ball. You know, people have to take accountability and, um, you know, that's just part of the job. And I think everybody who's held high positions, you know, in college sports, in pro sports, understand that it's about winning. And, you know, when you don't do it, there's, you know, there's accountability that has to be had. And, uh, you know, I hope that the uh, the next coach that they get can, you know, kind of get things going again. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think Coach Mullen um, was a great coach. Uh, he had a lot of success in his time. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll land on his feet. And, um, you know, just like, like Coach Muschamp, continue and have a, yeah, have a great co coaching career. I wish nothing, nothing, but the best, nothing but the best for Coach Mullen, uh, you know, except when, except when he plays the Gators. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to jump into a quick Q&A. We only got four questions here for you. We asked, like, fans of the show, like, what they would want to ask you. So uh, one question. Do you play golf? And if so, what was your what's your favorite course you've ever played at over the years? I play a little bit of golf. Um, not as good as I would like to be. <laughs> um, the, the, my favorite course that I've played at is Bay Hill. Hey, hometown. Yeah, a little hometown <laughs> course. And uh, it's... I'm definitely triple digits at Bay Hill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good, but I, when I'm out there, I'm going to enjoy it. That's for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Maybe maybe play in a celeb pro or something. That would be pretty cool. And then uh, another one, Damien's got two for you. Uh, if you could have lunch with anybody in the world, who would it be? Just like a 30-minute hour-long lunch. Oh, man. Yeah, it's a tough question. That is a, such a tough question. We asked the tough questions. <laughs> Let me get that one last. Let me, let me get something All right. else. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, speaking of, like you said, golf, what are the other hobbies that you like to do? I know I, look, I know football takes a lot of that out the way, but, you know, when you're not on the offseason, what do you like to do in the offseason? So I have two daughters. Um, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Just spending time with them. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. that, that's your, like you said. That's you put, awesome. You put the, the football and there's not much time left. Um, yeah. But, um, I mean, I like to do anything outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, that eats up most of my time, and I'm okay with that. Hunting, fishing, anything like that? Yeah, hunting, fishing, awesome. It's hard yeah, to, it's to. Out and hunt during the season. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, love to fish. Not very good at it, but uh, I like to. I like to just get outside, get on the boat, get in the water, whatever it might be. Yep. And then charitable foundations. I know you're big into charity and giving back to the people. What are some of the foundations that you're linked with that people you maybe maybe not know about? Yeah, so the the main one that I'm associated with is uh, at home in Orlando. It's the Orlando Health Foundation. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a it's a charity that you know just focuses on um, you know helping people with their medical bills, making sure that people in the hospital are taken care of um, to the best of their abilities, and really just making a um, environment where you know a patient can be happy and smile because it, it's hard. You know, people in the yeah, hospital hard. have a hard enough time, and uh, they just find a way to to put a smile on. Um, someone's face who's having a tough go. So I really just appreciate everything that they do for the community. And, um, you know, I just try to do a little bit to help out in that mission. Nice. And we'll, we'll, we'll stay away from that lunch question, but I'll follow up with this. Um, if so, any like direct message maybe for the Oviedo and Haggerty community youth, and just know that I can speak on, uh, you know, experience, like I was one of those kids at, you know, at one point I got the pleasure of seeing you play high school ball. And then, um, what you kind of left, you might not know how the community, you know, responds, but there are kids who look up to you every day. You're one of the guys who made it. What's your message to them? Um, as far as trying to navigate their way to, to your shoes? Yeah. I mean, first of all, it's like humbling to hear, you know, people that were, were watching me when I was in high school, still kind of you know, look up to, to what I'm doing and my accomplishments and things like that. And uh, I don't know, I guess my message would just be that, I mean, no matter what your goals are, whether it's sports, business, college, whatever it might be, I mean, it's attainable. Uh, um, at the end of the day, it's not going to be easy, but, you know, your goals, they're attainable and, uh, you know, go after it and give it your all. And if it doesn't work out the first time, maybe transfer to Louisiana Tech and throw for 4,000 yards. <laughs> I love that. All right. That's a perfect way to wrap it. Let's, uh, that's perfect. So if, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Um, you took your time out of your busy schedule. Obviously you're in the league. Um, I assume you had practices or some type of meetings, walkthroughs today. So, um, I really appreciate you taking your time. Like he always gives back to the community. I texted him and, and, you know, just reached out to see if, if he could, you know, support hometown trying to me and him are trying to both be sports journalists didn't really make it on the field as we as we thought we could but so we're trying to cover the sports now so i really appreciate you helping us out um hopefully we can get your word out back to uh you know Oviedo and um maybe have you on another time i, I really appreciate it jeff thanks so much yeah guys thank you yeah i appreciate it make it big make sure uh you continue to say good things about me absolutely i i'll never stop dude it's crazy the, the people in Oviedo. they really they your name's still brought up. I'm telling you right now. Well, I appreciate it. Hopefully good things. Absolutely. And yes, uh, sir, take definitely. care. Thanks so much, man. Thank Thanks, you. Good luck with the rest of the season. Thanks, boys.